I'm joined live via Skype by Joshua Williams. He is the president of Strategic Consulting Services Company, Fashion Consort, as well as assistant professor at the Parsons School of Design. Welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to say it's back, um, it is. but smaller and with masks. And I'm curious how important you think this is going to be. And looking at the historical significance of Fashion Week and what it means to that entire region. Sure. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of brands, this is an opportunity to kind of come back uh, with their sort of new uh, perspective and to be able to come back and say, look, we're, we're stronger than ever and we're here despite COVID. And I think that that really is the focus of the celebrations this year is, is really that, that we, we made it through a very, very difficult year, notwithstanding the issues that we're still dealing with. The impact of fashion, the fashion industry in New York has been um, very long term. I mean, we're really kind of hitting almost the 100 year mark of the fashion show as it is, ex it is <clears throat> excuse me, as it exists today. Uh, this was really an opportunity to bring uh, the press from all over the world to come and see what was happening in New York City. And, it, and it's really continued to be that all the way up until today. You know, you talked about the press from all over the world. We went through the numbers leading into Fashion Week, but it's so much more than that. The fact that there aren't the models, there's not gonna be the buyers, not a lot of international presence at all. What are the expectations for these few days? How important are they? Well, one of the big shifts that's been happening in the fashion industry anyway is the fact that it's become a lot more democratized, meaning that brands can connect with consumers a lot more democratically and a lot more, um, directly, so they don't necessarily need the press to mediate. And I think in many ways, this Fashion Week will be an opportunity uh, for the brands to do exactly that, to reach out to their directly to their consumers and to speak to them, uh, both in terms of the visuals that they're presenting in their collections, but also in terms of what they uh, want their customers to know about, you know, their values and what they stand for and, and the fact that they're, uh, you know, there to help the customer. Interesting take. Now, virtual interviews, virtual shows, video, it was the best we could do over the past couple of years. But I'm struck by the energy Fashion Week brings to New York. What's the effect on the industry as a whole? Well, you know, New York City is a, is a melting pot in many ways. And I think that's part of the reason why fashion is such an important part of it is that it's very diverse. There's just so many different people working on such different ideas and concepts that are around fashion. And of course, we all wear clothes. So, so this is something that's essential in terms of our lives. And, and, and I think, you know, whether or not you're totally into fashion or not, it still affects how you live and how you present yourself within the world we live. And I think that New York is, is much more than just fashion. It's really the media. It's, it's the cultural center in many ways of the United States. And when you combine all of these kinds of things all in one place, it just creates a lot of excitement because it really is more than just showing a collection. It really is a celebration of, of everything kind of coming together at one time in one place. It's also, you know, it seems like such an ex exciting time for people just to feel good about things. Now, with the scaled back show, there are those that say there are the advantages. Uh, do you think that's the case? And, and do you think we'll ever return to the really over the top flashy shows, crowded once again, people uh, forcing their way in to get as close as they can to, to the runway? I, you know, I think a lot of what's happened in retail could be the same for what happens in the, in the fashion industry in general. I think that we'll certainly see the big shows. I don't think those are going to go away. Uh, certainly people um, have an appetite for that and want to see something big and, and, and celebratory. But on the flip side, I think um, there's also the need to be more connected to the customer, as I said earlier. And that doesn't necessarily mean a big show. It might mean a celebration uh, that takes place largely online, where people from all over the world can gather and watch and, and participate. And so I think, if anything, we're going to see a bifurcation in the market between sort of these big shows that are, are part of our past, part of the tradition, but also these smaller shows that really are taking advantage of technology to, to create community. You know, you talked earlier about what it means to New York, but one also has to think about Paris, Milan, Shanghai. What has COVID done to these global capitals of fashion? Well, in many ways, it's, it's sort of cut them off, right? So um, while we still have social media and the, and the media and communications and ways to, um, to, to reach out, in large part, the industry has had to rely on its own. And so New York has really had to focus on New York and Paris on Paris. And I think in some ways that's allowed us to remember uh, the uniqueness of each of those cities. I think there was pre-COVID 
uh, this almost over globalization of what fashion was. And, and a lot of people were complaining that the shows were not, not much different in Paris as in Milan or London or New York. And, and I think we've had to look sort of internally and say, what makes New York special? Let's focus on that. What makes Paris special? Let's focus on that. You know, Joshua, not a lot of time left here, but I was taken by one headline that I saw earlier today. It read, Fashion Week will highlight in-home comfort. What does that say about expectations? And for a lot of consumers, that's really going to hit home considering what happened over the past year. And for the bottom line as an industry as a whole, what does that mean? Well, I think it's a lot of... I think there's a, there's a push towards comfort in general. I think we've had all a, a, a chance to sort of... Uh, you know, feel like we can wear clothes for the first time maybe in a long time, that we're comfortable, comfortable first and foremost. And that's certainly going to be a trend, and it's a, 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 and more than a trend. I think that companies now have to be more than just pretty, more than just beautiful. They really have to serve a functional purpose. I think it goes to comfort, but it also goes to just even recognizing that there isn't sort of one type of customer anymore, and that brands really have to to be a lot more variated in what they're offering to the customer. And I think comfort uh, of, for people of all types and all bodies uh, will feel comfortable in the clothes that they wear. Okay, I'm gonna put on some uh, uh, jogging shorts the next time I come out here to do this show. Or, or your pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Joshua Williams, thanks very much. President of Consulting Services Company, Fashion Consort, and Assistant Professor at the Parsons School of Design.